In this example, I'm going to walk through the basics on how to do a spatial join. Now, I have two data sets in my ArcGIS project right now. I have New York City schools that I've already gone through and geocoded, and I also have New York City school districts. So I essentially can do a join either way. I can attempt to attach the school district information to my New York City schools if it's not already an attribute that I have. I can also do a variety of things where I can summarize information about the schools based on where they sit. So I can find out, for example, how many schools are within a given school district. So that's the first thing I'm going to try. And to get to my options, it's just as if you're doing a tabular join. You right click on the file, go to Joins and Relates, and select Join. Now the difference here is that instead of trying to join attributes from a table, you actually want the second option, join data from another layer based on a spatial location. So I select that, and we'll see that we get a whole bunch of other options here. So it's going to ask us to choose the layer to join to this layer, or load the layer, and this looks correct. I want to join to the geocoding result, the New York City Schools. And since I want to find out how many schools are within each school district, I'm going to go down here and select Sum. You have some other basic statistics that you can ask it to calculate if you wish. And then for step three, I'm going to change this to whatever file name that I ultimately want to create, which in my case will be New York City School Districts. with school counts or something else appropriate. Click OK. And now I have a new shapefile that should be reflecting the school counts. So I can right click on the new layer, go to open attribute table, and verify that's the case. And I'll see here that it's actually summed any numeric column that I had in my original file. Well, clearly this is the one I want. This is the count field, which basically identifies for every given school district how many schools were in it. However, it's also summed the zip field, and that's entirely meaningless to me. So I'm going to highlight the column, right click, and then select delete field to remove it. But now that I have the count field, I can do a variety of things just as you would with any other layer. I can go back into my symbology options and view the data based on how many schools there are in each school district and begin working with my map. Now the second way that I can perform a join is I can join the actual school district information into my geocoded result, the New York City Schools. So if I open up this attribute table, prior to doing that you can see that I don't actually have anything that identifies the school district yet. Now just as I did before, Instead of right-clicking on the school district, I'm going to right-click on my New York City Schools shapefile. Go down to Joins and Relates again. Select Join. It remembers what I did last, which is a spatial location join. And it selected for me the New York City School District School Counts. I can change that to the original file, New York City School Districts. And then I have an option here to either assign each point the attributes that it falls inside or its closest to. And in this case I want to assign what it falls inside. And down for step three I give that a new name. Click OK. It performs the spatial join. And now I have a new point file, and if 
I right click, open the attribute table, I can verify what it did. And here, I'll see that it's actually added the appropriate school district. So again, I can get rid of these extra fields. And if I want to, I can go back into this point layer symbology. Perhaps I'll pick categories this time, and I can symbolize the schools based on their unique school district. And there you go. So the results of the spatial join using the same files, it really just depends on the intent and what information you're hoping to glean from your data sources.